Linux is only for programmers and tech experts. Linux lacks good applications. Linux is difficult to install. Linux is not secure. Linux, Linux is, is not, not compatible, compatible with hardware. Hi, I'm Jewelry and I use Linux. I made a video about how to play and optimize Genshin Impact on Linux. And a lot of you seem to like the video, although there are some things I see that I could have improved better in that video. Besides that, I am still learning as I go. There are Linux challenge videos of people giving the penguin a try, and while I enjoyed watching some videos, others were quite interesting. Did I manage to completely nuke my desktop environment? Like my GUI? It is what it is. It is, it is what it is. <laughs> I've been using Linux for quite some time now and I had a pretty good experience using it so far. Now Linux still has misconceptions and myths about it that people still hold on to today and I can understand why they have these beliefs. But with its current state, I think Linux has got better over the years. So here's my experience using it, but first. I grew up using various versions of Windows for most of my life, like Windows 2000, XP, Vista, 7, 8, and 10. Windows dominated pretty much everything at the time, like gaming, listening to music, and so on. It was the de facto operating system for most users, and this is how people grow up using computers. Nowadays, this is no longer the case. When Windows 10 came out at the time, a lot of users didn't like it or never wanted to use it because of how much telemetry the OS would collect on you. Basically, Microsoft started to collect user data over user experience. And at this point, this is where I started to have my own problems. During my time using Windows 10, I would experience weird problems like my network sometimes disconnecting and the troubleshooter not even trying to solve this issue. Then I would get a connection back, but this issue became so relevant that I was so annoyed with it. Then I would experience random blue screens of death every time I played my games even when I didn't overclock my PC. In addition, I also had weird issues like playing media. What would happen is, if I play an audio file like an mp3 or just a mp4 video, my PC would freeze and so did the media player. This issue would also appear when I just wanted to watch some YouTube videos. As the saying goes, you open your browser and you pretty much try to find ways to fix this issue. However, most of the Google search results didn't work for me when I tried them. It got so bad that I had to boot into safe mode and then manually manually uninstall my GPU and other sound drivers. Recording videos was also becoming a problem and I heavily depend on OBS to record what I need for these videos. Whenever I started recording a game or just use my screen share, my FPS in OBS would drop and so did my gameplay. I already knew that this was a performance issue. But I never had this issue when I started recording videos like these and posting them on my YouTube channel. Although I was able to solve most of these issues I mentioned above, I was starting to get more and more weird uh, issues, so to say. And in general, Windows becoming a service as it is nowadays, you cannot uninstall certain apps that came bundled with Windows unless you are an experienced user and you use certain PowerShell scripts. And even with that, after a huge update, those apps that you uninstalled will still come back to your PC anyways. Microsoft already lost the whole point of privacy, so I'm not going to bother talking about that. In Windows Vista, I believe you had the option to skip updates or even delay them. But in Windows 10, they got rid of them. So if you do not update your system, you will shoot yourself in the foot due to security flaws or vulnerabilities. What bothers me about these updates specifically is waiting for them to finish doing their thing. Like let's say you were in the middle of playing a game or you were editing a video or whatever you're doing. Then you notice that your computer is kind of slowing down as if you're having performance issues. Then you realize that your computer is updating and once you install the update, you cannot do anything other than just sit there like a duck and looking at the screen with the loading bar. 
that's telling you to not turn off your computer and wait for the updates to install. Not only does this bother me, but the time I had to play all of my games and whatnot is now going to waste because of a simple update that is hindering me from doing what I want to do. Another thing that really scares me about using Windows is how malware has become so easy and sophisticated to install nowadays. Don't get me wrong, Windows is a fairly secure operating system. The problem is, since hackers are always one step ahead when it comes to malware and all that, it has become so easy to download and install malware without realizing it due to how sophisticated it has become. In fact, whenever I download stuff from my browser, I become so paranoid that I have to constantly check if the stuff that I'm downloading is filled with malware or not. Yeah, I'm going to give a small rant on this one. I never bothered updating to Windows 11 simply because it is more bloated and clunky. If anything, Copilot really rubs me the wrong way. Like, I do not want an AI to constantly track me what I'm doing on my desktop and that is just me. I guess what I'm really saying is, Microsoft really wants you to stay on Windows so that you can become trenched into their ecosystem so that they can feed you with ads, Microsoft applications, and so on as a paid service. While all of this was happening, I finally thought about switching to Linux. Now, believe it or not, I actually used to use Linux during my time on Windows. The first Linux distribution was Linux Mint, and I got it on an Asus laptop as something to use for productivity. When I used it, I knew it was not like Windows, so I had to learn what Linux is and the whole philosophy behind it. I watched a lot of videos on how to use Linux Mint as a distro because again, Linux is not like Windows. So I had to learn this the hard way. I gave it a try for a few days and the experience was pretty good. But I suddenly lost interest to it and used Windows instead. The second attempt was to nook Windows on my new computer and use Linux again on a new PC I got. This time I installed Pop! OS as my main distro. Overall, I liked Pop! OS from the look and feel to it. And since it's based on Ubuntu, Pop! OS shares packages with Ubuntu, which I think is a good thing. However, there was one day when I decided to reinstall Windows again. So with these failed attempts of using Linux, how did I make the complete switch then? Well, this time there were a lot of things I needed to consider before completely switching. 1. Which distro should I use this time? 2. Which alternative software are available on Linux? 3. Will all of my games work on Linux? And 4. Which Windows programs work on Linux? The good thing is, when I got a second PC for productivity and somewhat gaming, I already installed Windows on it. So not only were most of my questions solved, but in case I needed to use a Windows application or software that was not compatible on Linux, I can use my second PC for that. This saved me from a lot of headaches this time. As for games, most Steam games that I have and non-Steam games work on Linux, except for only one game, and that is Genshin Impact. At the time, this game did not work on Linux, although there were workarounds to make it work. However, this workaround was unofficial and the chances of you getting banned was high, so my plan was to play it on my second PC, until... Huh? I could not believe it at first, but when I saw some gameplay for it, I was surprised that it works. With all of this, I packed up my files and documents onto another SSD. Oh, which Linux distro did I choose this time? I chose Ubuntu simply because it is easy for beginners, it is very stable, and it has a large community base. So whenever I would encounter issues or problems, I would know exactly where to ask for help. And because of the fact that it is very stable, I never had any real issues when using it. In fact, I actually had a good experience. But I did not use Ubuntu for too long as I switched to another Linux distro. This time, Fedora being my main Linux distro. 
for now. Now that Fedora installed everything I needed including my AMD drivers and the RPM Fusion for installing other third party party applications, I was ready to use my PC. For productivity, using Linux for me was actually pretty good in the sense that most applications that I needed work on Linux. So this is recording, scripting and playing games. OBS Studio works on Linux. So when I installed it, it worked flawlessly with no issues. Compared to Windows where I had performance issues when I was recording a gameplay that wasn't even demanding. Linux on the other hand works just fine and I can record pretty much anything without any single FPS drop. As for scripting, I use a software called Notion. I'm pretty sure most of you are aware what Notion is. It's a powerful productivity app that you can use for pretty much anything. I use Notion for making these YouTube videos so that I can have a clear structure of what I'm doing. On Linux, it it's pretty much available, it's just that it uses a different name which is called Cohesion and it works right out of the box with no issues. For communication purposes, I use Discord and this works with pretty much no issues. As for audio, in order to make these videos, I use Audacity for audio or audio scripts in general. And for thumbnails, well, I just use Canva Pro and it works just fine in any browser. I also use other applications like Go Control for overclocking bottles, which is more of an advanced application for playing games and extension manager for GNOME. But basically, I seem to use more Linux software, which is pretty much available compared to Windows. Although I do have a second PC, which I already mentioned above just in case if I do need a Windows application. How you install these applications on Linux is completely different than on Windows. You don't open a browser and go to a specific website to download an executable and launch it to install in your system, that is if it's not infected with malware. Instead, we use repositories. Think of them like your app store in Apple that allows you to install apps. They are well maintained, checked and tested thoroughly so that they work. And downloading these is way more efficient than it is on Windows. Alternatively, you can use the terminal aka the command line to install packages and software as well. And I promise you, this is not a scary as most people make it seem. Using the terminal is actually fairly easy. Gaming on Linux was always a pain, especially when there were only a few games that were supported. Now gaming has got way better on Linux. Thanks to Valve and their Steam Deck becoming successful, they have been working on this portable device to make their games work underneath Linux. With the compatibility layers, which I'm sure you are already aware of, like Proton, VKT3D, DXVK and Wine, you can play almost any game. By that I mean single player games of course. As for multiplayer games, it is like a chicken and egg situation. While more multiplayer games are becoming playable like Apex Legends, Battlefield 1, The Finals and Genshin Impact, other popular ones like Fortnite, COD, Valorant and Battlefield 5 will not work on Linux due to intrusive kernel level anti-cheats. It is not Linux fault, I think it's just that devs do not want to opt support for it due to Linux low market share. And I also think most gaming companies just don't like Linux or they have some myths about Linux that's preventing them from wanting to opt support. So for me, I'm happy enough to play these multiplayer games that work on Linux and other single player games I own, despite the major drawbacks. The same thing will apply to productivity, specifically in niches like video editing. If you use something like Adobe Premiere Pro, then you might want to consider twice before switching to Linux as that software will never work on Linux due to the company itself not wanting to provide support. But alternatively, you can use DaVinci Resolve or Force like Caden Life on Linux. So to summarize, as long as you don't play games with intrusive kernel level anti-cheats or shitty DRM, you'll be fine playing most games on Linux. And if you're comfortable using other alternative software for your needs. But if you do, then it will be a problem for you switching to Linux. Oh, and for those wondering, yes, emulation works great on Linux.
I can go a tantrum on this one, but I'll give a few examples. On Windows, you always need to create a Microsoft account to use their operating system, which I find useless and a waste of time. There's no such thing on Linux. All you need is a user account for creating a password and you are done. Next is privacy. Privacy is something that is near and dear to my heart. And Windows does not care about your privacy at this point. Again, with the intrusive ads and annoying spyware on that operating system, it is pretty obvious that Microsoft wants you ingrained in their ecosystem. Linux distributions, on the other hand, do not come with intrusive ads or spyware. The nature of open source like Linux means not only you have freedom, but you can get so much breathing room for that. It's like being free from the chains of intrusive ads and spyware. Lastly, user control. With Windows being more bloated as ever, Microsoft has full control of their operating system. This means they want you to use their operating system in a certain way. Compared to Linux, you have full control of your system. This means you decide how you want your Linux distribution to behave. For example, you can delay or not update your system if you want to. You have the option to install applications that you do not need to use. And lastly, customization. When it comes to customization, I think Linux has the upper edge compared to Windows or even Mac OS. I have never seen an operating system that gives you this much customization. Like the ways to customize your Linux distro is pretty much endless. And the great part about this is that you can customize your Linux distro to your liking you will always find something that fits your needs. And this is what I find Linux better than Windows. As much as I want to give Linux a lot of praise, it is not all rainbow though. As stated above, one of the major drawbacks like software compatibility, hardware compatibility, especially newer ones, and the learning curves that you might have to get used to, Linux might not be for everyone. And the amount of Linux distros that are available to choose from might even scare the average Windows user. I had a good experience using Linux and I'll think I'll stick using it. While I run into issues, no doubt about them, I can fix them easily with the help of the community or ask AI like ChatGPT. Despite some initial hurdles, Linux offers a powerful, secure and customizable customizable desktop experience that's constantly improving. With a vibrant open source community and a focus on user choice, Linux empowers users to tailor their computing experience to their specific needs. Whether you are a programmer, a gamer, or someone who values privacy and security, there's a Linux distribution out there waiting to be explored. So if you're looking for an alternative that puts you in control, why not give the penguin a try? You might be surprised at what you discover. I hope you guys enjoyed the video and if you did, let me know in the comments. Give this video a like and I will see you in the next video. Take care.